This arid coastline, bordered by a turquoise sea, is one of the most dangerous in the world. From these deserted shores, Somali pirates launched their attacks, threatening the sea traffic off the Horn of Africa. The Pramoni, a 20,000-ton chemical tanker flying the Singaporean flag, was the victim of one of these acts of piracy. The 24 members of the crew, taken hostage aboard, have waited to be freed since the 1st of January 2010. Negotiations are underway, but it is impossible to get closer to the ship without putting their lives in danger. Modern piracy is a nightmare for the 20,000 ships that pass through the Gulf of Aden each year. The passage, part of a major sea route between Asia and Europe, is an unavoidable stretch of water for world trade. A trade that is today threatened by increasing hijackings that have sent the price of insurance and imports rocketing. Syed Afak Ahmed, captain of the tanker Otina, is passing through for the third time. At each time, tension is just as high. This area is one of the worst uh, at the moment in the world. Seafarers are in real, uh, real trouble because of this piracy. You can imagine that, you know, like what would your family be feeling, your, your kids, your wife, you know, your, uh, what stressful they would be if they hear that their loved ones are captured. And I would, uh, I would say that this has to be taken really seriously. Following a United Nations request in 2008, NATO deployed a naval force to the region to escort ships that were carrying humanitarian aid to Somalia under the World Food Program. Similar missions have been continuing ever since. It's full alert on board the Absalon, a Danish warship taking part in Operation Ocean Shield, led by the Alliance. At just 25 years of age, Heidi is on her third mission in the area. And for her, as for the rest of the crew, pirates are no idle threat. I just have to make sure that uh, no ships are sailing towards us, or if I see anything suspicious, any small boats, anything like that. So I just have to make sure that we're sailing the right way, and uh, the other ships are sailing the right way as well. There's still pirate attacks. You can't be in everywhere at any time. There's a lot of waters down here, so you can't be everywhere. But they're more safe here, because there are always a Navy ship near. Being near like this, the Absalon has been able to intervene rapidly on several occasions. On the 5th of February 2010, a Slovenian cargo ship named Ariella sent out a distress call. The crew, which was able to take shelter in a safe room, confirmed the presence of armed men on deck. The Absalon's special forces had to scale the 30,000-ton cargo ship without a pilot, sailing at full speed into one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. In the space of a few minutes, they gained control of the ship. As for the pirates, they fled. A few days earlier, the Absalon came to the aid of the Faize Ozami. After several days of captivity, the 14 members of the Dao's crew were freed safe and sound. Once again, the pirates fled. <laughs> Lieutenant Rasmus, in command of the boarding party, has taken part in several rescue operations. We took them by surprise that night. They didn't know we were coming. So uh, we told them to uh, take, uh, put up your arms and uh, we quickly went to the boat and we uh, confiscated or we uh, made hand, uh, laid hands on every weapon. It even works even though it's uh, very rusty. They're very functional. And now it's ready. Yet the Absalon is not confined to responding in the event of an attack. It also serves as the command ship for Standing NATO Maritime Group 1, one of the Alliance's naval forces. NATO has what we call lines of operation, and I guess you can say the primary one is to uh, 
disrupt uh, the piracy, and that means protect the shipping that goes through the area and uh, denying the pirates the possibility of attacking the merchant uh, vessels that are going through. And if, there's, uh, if there, we see attacks, then we try to stop the attacks. But NATO forces are not the only ones in the area. Well, first of all, there's international cooperation within the NATO task group. There's at uh, present a Danish ship and an uh, American ship involved. Um, so that's one form of international cooperation. On the other side, there are two other task groups, task forces around here that we will have to coordinate with. And there's uh, countries involved here that are, do not belong to a specific task group, but uh, they are involved in counter piracy and we need to coordinate actions with them as well. The Absalon exchanges information in real time with the 13 vessels of the European Union's operation Atalanta and the ships of Task Force 151, a coalition under US control, as well as the various national navies present in the zone. In all, about 20 warships are patrolling Somali waters to ensure their safety. A complex task for which the teams receive regular training with one single objective, to intervene before the pirates board in order to protect the lives of civilian sailors. The enemy they are dealing with is all too often unpredictable. There are different types of pirates. Uh, some are more professional than others, uh, but still uh, they are people who go out and uh, they are not afraid of using weapons uh, at the merchant ships. Uh, we have also seen that they are willing to use weapons also uh, against uh, military forces. And uh, they are probably on drugs, some of them, and uh, they are, uh, you can't count on the uh, way of, uh, they will react uh, towards us, so we have to uh, be prepared for anything when we approach them. The Danish special forces on board the Absalon are in the front line for these high-risk operations. But as military personnel themselves concede, the use of force cannot be the only solution in the long term. We are sort of uh, fighting the, uh, the symptoms, not the disease down here. Uh, and, uh, you know, to really solve the, the, the problem of piracy involves solving uh, the, the problem of Somalia. And the problems of Somalia are many and complex. We need to help the uh, local uh, states in the region down here to uh, build up their own uh, capability to uh, curb or fight piracy in the area. But that's, of course, a more uh, longer-term uh, uh, way to, to solve the problem. And we have to recognize that there are several things that can be done uh, to uh, reduce uh, piracy down here. And an important one is, of course, that the shipping industry take the appropriate measures to protect themselves, because there are just not enough warships in the world to protect all the ships that go through here. So we have to encourage and work together with the shipping industry so they also protect themselves. Prevention and passive defense measures that the Otina crew has fully adopted. For arriving this area, we have uh, briefed all the crew. Uh, we have done uh, a security drill. We keep all our doors locked. We keep extra lookouts. You know, apart from duty officer, there are two more lookouts. One looking ahead and one only watching the poop area, the quarters, you know, port and starboard quarters. Uh, we get uh, night vision binoculars. We rig uh, fire hoses around our uh, both sides poop deck. So in case there is an uh, alarm for uh, piracy security, then everybody to muster in this room here. This is called a cargo control room. You know, we got some extra provision behind this, uh, this panel. You know, if people muster here, if we lock the doors, they can survive for, you know, for some time. You know, some extra provision. Another essential condition for ships transiting via the Gulf of Aden is to follow the IRTC the internationally recommended transit corridor, a shipping lane that is secure thanks to the permanent patrols of international forces. Although the pirates show no intention of giving up their fight, the strategy is paying off. 
it's more secure now. People are taking more precautions. They're more cautious. The NATO ships uh, are more active now, I would say. And uh, it's, it's more secure than before. After several weeks patrolling the IRTC, it's time for the Absalon and its 150 crew members to leave the Gulf of Aden. The vessel sets sail due south for a new mission.